that it will be as we return you now to the scene here in the sports pavilion and we're coming up in just a couple of moments with the middleweight crown fight and to fermo against marvin hagler now you're going to be looking at there he is Vito and to fermo a kind of sawed off body but one of the roughest customers you'll ever want to find with enormous stamina. The ring record there in the graphic before you, 45 victories, 39, 19 by KOs. And there, as we go to Marvin Hagler, there he is. Felt by so many in New England to have been unjustly deprived of a championship shot for a long, long time. But Hagler with his record before you, dynamite as I have said earlier in either hand, a skilled boxer, a man who was originally a southpaw, converted to the orthodox style, is the, the referee, design, or rather the, the ring announcer, Chuck Hull. The next fight of the afternoon, the judges are Dolby Shirley, Al Miller, and Dwayne Ford. The referee is Mills Lane, the attending physician at ringside, Dr. Donald Romeo. The timekeeper is Ed O'Toole, counting at the knockdowns, Mike Morobito. This is a feature attraction of the afternoon. 15 rounds of boxing for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Introducing in the blue corner, weighing in at 158 and one half pounds, the challenger, marvelous Marvin Hagler. And in the red corner, Introducing, from Brooklyn, New York, weighing in also at 158 and one half pounds, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, Vito Antwavermo, 15 rounds of boxing. All right, you've heard Chuck Hull, the ring announce. The fight almost ready to begin. Now, as they get in for the instructions, there is the tail of the tape. No real age differential, minor height differential, weight exactly the same, important reach differential favoring Hagler. So be it. The two of them eyeing one another in the middle of the ring. And right there, looking on interestedly, is the brilliant 23-year-old unbeaten welterweight Sugar Ray Leonard. And very much underrated, enormously so. A brilliant fighter, Wilfred Benitez, the WBC welterweight champion. Remember that fight coming up tonight. But right now, back to this fight. It's a 19-6 by 19-6 ring. 10-point must system in scoring. Mandatory eight count on knockdowns. No standing eight counts. The three knockdown rule wave. They are fighting with Reyes gloves. Eight ounce, of course. And first round action. Antifermo is not a stylist. He is a rough customer. He knows how to use his arms, his shoulders, his head. And he relies on his tremendous stamina. Comes on strongly in the late rounds. Hagler is a stylist. He is a good boxer. I mentioned that he was a natural southpaw, converted, but you will see him convert in the middle of a fight, as Davy Armstrong of Olympic fame has done. Right now, he's using the right lead. There, that's what I mean about Antifirm. This is a night when challengers enter the ring as favorites. Antifermo, the champ, a big underdog to Hagler. A similar situation, although that was changing late today, with Benitez against Leonard. First round action, and you see Hagler with the right lead. in the bout is Mills Lane. He has no voice in the score. The three judges do. They are Dolby Shirley, Hal Miller, and Dwayne Ford. the way 
Ray Atchafermo likes to fight. Draw, ball, pull the opponent, wear him down. And a Fermo with a right lead there. Get up, Good blow of the fight. Hagler getting that right in. Wants to keep using that reach advantage. You'll hear the bell for the end of the round in just seconds. We're back live. Round two just underway. World Middleweight Championship at stake. No division here. Both WBC and WBA versions. Hagler to the right of your screen, the challenger, the predominant favorite. In the first round, fighting southpaw style. He was the more effective. He got in a good left, as you saw, against Antifermo. This is a good size ring, a lot of room to work with. And Hagler now putting his jab, his right blade jab, effectively together with an occasional left in combination. Fermo using his tactics, the tactics that brought him the crown against Hugo Caro in Monte Carlo, about we did at the end of June of this year. See that right lead getting in there? Do it, Jim, do it. Crowd mistook that a little bit. Thought Vito might have been hurt. Fermo trying to stay all over Hagla on the inside, using his body strength. But Anna Fermo paying the price. Hagla wanting to keep him off him so he can operate with his style and poise as a boxer. And knowing that both hands are power late. One minute to go in this, the second round. Crowd in the background now chanting, beat Joe, beat Joe. The way they used to chant, me no, me no, in the halcyon days of Nino Benvenuti. Wide left by Hagler, following the right. Into this round, we're going to go into the corners and seek to ascertain what the fighters are being told by the respective corners. Vito with a good counter right. What you must remember about Anna Fermo, too, first, he is a bleeder. Don't be misled by it because he survived many fights bleeding. a famous man in Anna Fermo's corner. In fact, he corrected the wrong scoring that took place in Monte Carlo and saved the title decision for Anna Fermo, Freddie Brown. That's he in the green shirt. And in the corner, they are telling Anna Fermo to maul him. There's Marvin Hackman in his corner. Trainer is Goody Petronelli. Manager is Pet Pat Petronelli. Louis Caparato and Steve Wainwright also in the corner. Agla totally poised and confident. He's been carrying around a fly swatter all over town. It says, Vito the Mosquito, I'll swat him like a fly. But there is Anna.
Santa Antifermo quickly following his corner's instructions and seeking to maul the opponent. Third round action. Southpaw style is Hagler with the steady right lead. Look for him to mix that up as the fight progresses. There was the left lead. Remember, he was a natural southpaw, and that left is dynamite. change. Get inside. Tie up the opponent and use everything you've got. The head, the shoulders. Mills Lane parts them. this early stage to be effective against Hack. against Vito Anafermo. Hagler to the right of your screen. That's what's at stake, the world middleweight crown. So far, the pattern plain. Anafermo trying to get inside, tie up the opponent. Maul, brawl with him. But Hagler effectively staying away, boxing beautifully and with punching power. Dominant in the first three rounds. Get up, get up, get up.
does keep coming, doesn't it? Benito is not a mosquito. Oh, that Antifermo head got up into Hagler's chin there. That's what Hagler must be very careful about. We are coming to the end of round four. There have been no knockdowns. Hagler again with the quick shot right, right in there, followed by the quick left. We'll go to Antifermo's corner at the end of this round. See as Santa Fermo gets in there, how he tries to use that head. There goes Vito in the corner. Getting worked over now. Four rounds gone past. They go right to work. Give me the bottle of water. Yeah. Give me the bottle of water. Freddie Brown in the green shirt, working him over. You pull him into the ropes. Did you hear that earlier? He said more pressure, more pressure. Get get off There's Hagler's corner. He's getting the ice treatment on the neck. Stay with him. Tremendously confident fight. And certainly very impressive. Thus far tonight. One of Vito's last statements in the corner. I'll go get him now. Let's see if he can. following the corner's instructions. More pressure. Oh, a right lead caught Hag Hagler, and it hurt him. Came out of nowhere. This is fifth round action. Hagler got in his own right there. There is a piece of Elastic. The top of the glove, a piece of bandage apparently, and it was just cut off. By Hagler's corner. Again. 
So the round ends, and we follow Vito to his corner. Let's listen. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece, mouthpiece. You're getting more effective. You're backing him up. You're not doing nothing. What's your right hand doing? Hey, this guy's scared of you, man. You know what I'm saying? Show your hand, champ. Vito. 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 Campeon. Show your two hands. Keep your hands up. All right? All right, we'll go to Hackler's corner. Okay. All right. What was funny was Freddie Brown saying, your right hand's not doing nothing. You got two hands. In point of fact, you saw Vito rock Hackler at least twice during the round, maybe three times with the right hand. But Freddie knows what he's doing. Exhort the fighter. He knows his fighters. In his 70s now, Freddie, for a long time, one of the great corner men of the business. Sixth round action. One would almost expect Hanna Fermo to start going to the midsection as he just did there. Strategically, that's the way to wear Hagler down. up jurisdictional strife here. It's for both the WBC and the WBA versions of the title. As Hagler scored effectively there with his combinations. Hagler now back to where he was in the first four rounds. Boxing beautifully. Controlling the action. Facing it his way. He's got distance between him and Antifermo. Then Antifermo comes in trying to tie up Agla, get inside of him and use the body. We're inside a minute. Turn to dominance clearly in this round. Look at that right get in there. The end of the round about here. So we once again watch Vito Anafermo go back to his corner. And hey, there he is. You see fight, the man. blood above the right eye, right there. Just a speck, and then the cut has been open. No real flow of blood yet under the right eye. We've got to use combinations for Christ's sake. Quick change of scene. Wilfred Benitez resting in his dressing room. Remember, he fights Sugar Ray Leonard, his crown at stake. Leonard not resting, but apparently absorbed by the flow of the events in the ring at the moment. Now we switch back to Marvin Hagler. Let's go. 
What was just said in the corner was he lunges. Corner man was telling Hagler and Affirmo lunges. As he lun lunges, he presents an incoming target. Get him then. Coming up, Galindez against Johnson. Heavyweight title at stake. The scene set for that, the venue, the Superdome in New Orleans. This one is for the world middleweight crown. Hagler has done a beautiful job. He's dictated the fight. He's fought his fight. He has not fallen prey to Vito's fight. judged by the Yells. Curious, Hagler blinked his right eye, half touched his right eye with his right glove, as if his vision was at least for a second or two in bad. But he's back to himself again. And as the action proceeds, it is still Hagler dictating the fight. The fight style. Okay, that was the end of the round. And right there, we switch you to New Orleans. And there is Victor, the bull, Galindez, who will be undertaking the defense of his crown. Having beaten Mike Rossman earlier this year to recapture his crown, and he did not have a problem making the way. We come back to the sports pavilion in Caesars Palace, where we are going to be going into the eighth round. Right there is Marvin Hack. The fight has been beautifully fought by this young man. He's been waiting so long for a chance at the title. There you see the arena. And coming up, Lindez against Johnson. After that, Benitez against Leonard. Meanwhile here, the bell for round eight. So far, the cut under... Vito's right eye and above the right eye have not had a blood flow. And that's been fortunate. Scoring. 
It smells lame, the referee breaking them up. Remember, he does not have a voice in the scoring. Three judges do. because, of course, Hagler has the reach on it. Lunching blow. changing, clearly fixed. Hagler trying to box, keep the shorter man off him, not all with him or brawl with him. And a Fermo trying to do exactly that. And just then, as he came in and tied up Hagler, he did score. And right there, he scored with a right again. This has not been a bad round for Anto Fermo. Right there by Anna Firma. One must look out now as to Hagler's stamina. Because remember, we told you, Anna Firma comes strongly in the late rounds. The end of the round coming up. Back for round nine. Anna Firma, the shorter man. Hagler, the challenger, the overwhelming favorite. Anna Firma, told by his corner people, when you throw the punches, you hit them. Throw the punches. This is the time to start looking closely at Anna Fermo in terms of his steady movement, steady pursuing, steady attacking, and Hagler in terms of his stamina. Hagler now using that ring. See him dance. 19-6 by 19-6 ring. And Hagler using the same basic weapon that he's used to pace and control the fight. Fighting mainly southpaw style with the right lead. While swing and a miss by Hagler. Anna Fermo's most effective blows, especially in his two best rounds, the fifth and the eighth, have been the right lead. As the last round ended, though, it must be remembered, Anna Fermo scored well with a left. And right there with another left. Anna Fermo is coming on. As he showed you there. in the flow of the fight because Anna Fermo making this much more his kind of fight. Hagler had been setting and controlling the flow of the action decisively in the earlier rounds, in my view. corner again at the end of this round. Try and pick up what that corner is telling the defending champion. Oh. Round coming
coming to an end. And Hagler not throwing as many punches. There's Anna Fermo. Poppies. Poppies. From one. You're making this game missing. You're not punching, man. Punch. Interesting, isn't it? Punch, they tell him. Vito has begun punching in the last two rounds. An old familiar corner attack. Exhort the fighter. Keep him going. In the background, the fans chanting, Vito. And Hagler is being told exactly the same thing. Punch, you gotta punch. It's so easy to do it when you're the corner people. Still on the, road. In the meantime, there has been, as I said, a subtle change in the pattern of the fight over the last two rounds. Now, Hagler responding to his corner, quick with a couple of right leads. Tenth round action. Falling, but connecting. Much more than he had in the early going. And Hagler, a good quick right lead there, the second one in the last few seconds. But certainly not throwing nearly as many punches as he did in the earlier rounds. We have two minutes to go, and this is the tenth round. with the head fakes and the shoulders. But his scoring has clearly, at this point in the fight, lessened in its frequency and in its impact. Sua now, and with a minute to go in round 10, and in view of what has happened in the two rounds preceding this one, one can clearly state that Antifermo is coming on. Crowd totally misled, Antifermo off balance had an air slip. He was not hit. Monte Carlo. Anna Fermo starting poorly and coming on strong in the last five rounds, six rounds of that fight. Coming to the end of the round. Forget NCAA college football doubleheader this Saturday. Pitt against Penn State, 12:30 Eastern time. That figures to be some battle, and the Panthers have had themselves a great year with only one defeat, and then the great traditional game, Army against Navy. No matter the records, that's a game that matters, always has. I'll never forget the year that Colonel Blake converted his great. And Don Holliday into a T formation quarterback. And astonishingly, Holliday, whom they call Blake's Folly, led Army to victory over George Welch's Navy team. George, then the quarterback, now the Navy coach. We're back here 
and seizes Ballas. That's Marvin Hagler, whom you just looked at. The 11th round coming up. The fight has grown, I think, suspiciously close. Antifermo coming on in the last three rounds. Hagler not throwing as much leather. And there is your evidence. It is Anna Fermo now who is making the fight, pacing, fighting his fight. And Hagler's stamina is to be watched closely. This is the 11th round. And at stake, the World Middleweight Championship. Marvin trying to use the ring. Steady foot move. Notice, incidentally, how slick he is when he turns to the left lead, to the orthodox fighting. The left jab is very quick. And in the main, he has fought with the right lead in the south Boston. Incidentally, when Benitez goes against Leonard, Watch for the same thing. Wilfred likes to convert to the southpaw style. Especially when he's fighting on the ropes. Right there, Anna Furman scored heavily with the left. And the crowd responds. They can sense it. Anna Furman with another good left. Hagler beginning to respond himself. The lead he had built up in this fight. And Hagler, I think, was hurt. Hurt or tired. Anna Fermo uses that sawed-off torso of his. So effective. round. slightly, suddenly rebounded in the final minute of that 11th round and stunned Vito. You will never see a tougher gamer fighter than Vito Andrew Affirmo. is trying to do right now, as you quickly see, is reestablish the pace and pattern of the earlier rounds. Keep Vito off him. Use the boxing skills, the superior reach. See how much Anna Fermo has left after the pounding he took in the last minute of the last round. Pretty decent go of it, but 
fatigue is understandable here in the 12th round. sequences of punches. told him earlier in the fight when he had a chance to listen. He lunges, get him coming in, and that's what happened there. Just as Hagler was reasserting command, this tough little cookie who doesn't want to lose his title came back and landed three crisp, sharp blows and stung Hagler. Hagler now, tired, against the ropes. They're telling him from his corner, get off the ropes. He did, quickly moving on his toes, establishing movement. But it's amazing the way that little fella, Anna Fermo, will strike back at you. You think he's about to give out, and bang. Right there. Good, straight, right. Anna Fermo. the end of the 12th round. All right, we're back live. Sports Pavilion, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. 13th round action underway. Pattern of the fight. Change from the way it was in the beginning. Most ringside people have Hagler ahead, but the question is, by what margin? Because Anna Fermo has come on ever since the eighth round. Hagler reestablished himself in the 11th. The 12th round could have gone either way. Performer Hagler. And a Fermo getting in. Look at that head. See where he puts that head as he has throughout the fight. Lay that strength of that upper body all over the other man. Right there, he's doing it again. And on the break, he got in a short right. He got in another good straight right. Terrible danger spot for Marvin Hagler when he's pinioned against those ropes. Now he's trying to reestablish movement. Use the ring. Anna Fermo beckoning to him. Come on. The old Ali style. And the crowd is on its feet and responding.
return with more boxing action after this from our local stations. We're back live in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's the bell for round 14, the world middleweight title at stake. The defending champion, the heavy underdog, Vito Antifermo, has taken over this crowd because from the eighth round on, after being beaten up pretty decisively, or at least outboxed pretty decisively in the early going by Marvin Hagler, Antifermo has turned the thing around. He has changed the pace of the fight. He has made it his kind of fight. It's not a pretty style of fighting. It's a heavy flow of blood now. Agla is cut. His back right above me. I'm trying to get to look at his face. There it is, the corner of the right eye. A gash and the blood flowing down. And Hagler, the one to be holding on. No, Vito is not a pretty fighter. What he is is a tough fighter, who, despite his absence of style, is very effective. Hagler's corner now begging Marvin to put it together. From his point of view, there's Hagler again, suddenly responding with punches. But that tough little cookie from Brooklyn, Vito Anafermo, keeps trying to come on. This has turned out to have shifting tides of fortune that didn't seem possible in the light of Hagler's dominance in the early going. As Anafermo still with that head lodged in. Still, Anafermo comes on, and the blood flows from the cut in the right corner of Hagler's right eye. This is 14th round action. This is not a split championship in the jurisdictional strife that envelops boxing. This is for the whole ball of wax. WBA and WBC. Blood on Vito's left shoulder is Hagler's blood. Let's go to Hagler's corner. has been in bed. Now let's go to Vito's corner. Vito. Yeah. He always looks like he's been beaten up to death. But somehow, that little cookie keeps coming on, coming on. Look at that battle-scarred face. You gotta finish these three rounds strong. Okay. Right hand. Right hand of the it out as a cakewalk. You see the blood over Vito. I mentioned that it's not a pretty thing, that it's the blood of Hack from the cut over the eye. And this is it, the final round. They touch gloves. Standing there now, toe to toe. Hagler with the, with the right and the left that constituted the clean of blows. Vito answering right back. I'm missing. The crowd has gotten its money's worth for this one. Vito, you saw him score. Agla's right eye. Miss. Agla coming right back, though. That's the beauty of this fight. Every time. And it's been this way from the eighth round going to control the pace and the action. His way, it will just as sudden.
suddenly switch. One thing is clear. Oh, Vito rocked by a Hagla uppercut. Left eye, a bloody mess now. Hagler using the uppercut, then ripping into Fermo with clean, sharp blows. And then if Fermo doesn't go down, then Hagler a little bit arm and leg weary. He, and look at that. Not pretty, is it? There is nothing stylish about Vito. Effectiveness. One minute left to go in the fight. Vito coming back now. This will not, I don't think, be the easiest fight in the world to score. against the Hoosier, Marvin Johnson of Indiana. And then after that, it will be the cunning, the canny, counterpuncher, who slips rights better than maybe any boxer I have ever seen, Wilfred Benitez, against Sugar Ray Leonard, who, though two years older than Wilfred, has not been fighting champions for the years that Wilfred has. You're looking at Hagler? Back to dancing now around. We are awaiting the decision. Chan of the crowd for Vita. Vito uplifting his arms. He's copying some of that Ali stuff himself now, I guess. Remember the way he beckoned to Hagler? I wonder if they're going to call this thing a draw. Should that be the case? And Affirmo retains his title. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Dalby Shirley scores 144, 142, and to Affirmo. Scores 145, 141, Marvin Hegler. One and one. Let's see how this thing goes. Judge Hal Miller scores 143, Hegler. 143, and to Affirmo. The decision is a draw. It's a draw. And to Affirmo is still. Emotions, but you've got to give it to that man. 
He did come on strongly. He changed, as I said, the pace and flow of the contest. You could see it happening from the eighth round on. And so he retains. He retains his middleweight championship of the world. Vito Antifermo. Now, let's go to Lynn Shear in New York for an ABC News Brief. All right, we're back at ringside, Las Vegas, Nevada. And right with me here and now is the still middleweight champion of the world. First of all, Vito, congratulations. You. You're about as tough and game a cookie as there is in the ring. Secondly, your fights are now assuming a pattern. The other guy builds up a lead in the early going. You have the stamina and come on in the late. It's true, but uh, uh, I, 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 a week ago I was going to pull out of this fight. I had I had very bad cold. As you see, I was coughing in the ring. But uh, thank God on my win, I came on through on the end like I expected to. But not like I, I really wanted to. You know? But... Uh, in the future, I hope to give him a rematch because he's a good fighter, and I guess he deserves a rematch in the future. Well, let's go back to your disclosure, because nobody really knew that a week ago you were contemplating pulling out of this fight. Yeah, uh, it's true. You know, a lot of people underestimate me, uh, like you underestimate me in, uh, in a fight against Coro. Coro is a very shrewdy guy. Matter of fact, I find Coro much difficult than, than this guy, but this guy, I guess he was a little tougher than Coro. But Coro is, is a lot difficult. I would rather fight this guy uh, more than I would than I would fight than I would fight Coro. That's another interesting point too. Did you sense that you had begun to change the pace and the flow and the control of the fight from about the eighth round on? Yes, I uh, because they told me that I was losing the fight up to the eighth round. So he says you got to get moving. Uh, but my wind wasn't as good as I wanted I wanted to be, but I, I guess I pulled it out. You sure did. At least you got enough to retain your Thank title. You. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Thanks, huh? Thank you very much. <laughs> Take care. And so, the story from... Say, yes, one second. I want to say thanks to my trainer. Freddie Brown does good cuts. He does a good job on the cuts in the corner. And Panama Lewis to get me in shape for this fight, and my man, Tony Carrione, and also Ray okay. Carica. All right, now I have to move it on. You understand. Congratulations to you all, especially you, Freddie Brown. So that's the picture. Vito Antifermo gets the draw, pulls out the draw with his late round rally, and retains his world middleweight crown. Marvin Hagler would not come over. He was just disgusted with the decision, felt he was jobbed, but you've already heard Vito Anafermo say Hagla will get a rematch. And interestingly, that he'd rather fight Hagla than a guy like Hugo Caro, whom he won the crown from, but who fights defensively in Monte Carlo. Right now, to New Orleans and Chris Schenkel. And